Okay, so today we have exercise 220, uh, which is establishing the exterior perspective view for your rendering. And um, depending on how far along you are, I may be slightly further than you need to be at this point. Uh, but at the same time, I have to start showing you other things and, and whatever. So as, as we go forward, I expect you to be here and to be working. But if you don't quite get to whatever I'm saying that you should get to, that's OK. Just post something that shows that you've been working and whatever. Um, today, I'm going to assume for the moment that you have enough geometry to be able to start establishing the scene, getting the HDRI backgrounds in place, um, setting up the sun, and starting to work with some of the environment. I'm going to show you some of the tricks for dealing with the environment, and making it look better, uh, with the hope that you'll be able to pick up on this as you go forward. Uh, and remember that since this is a block being dropped in, you can always keep working on it and then open this same file and come back and re-render with the updated version of your, of your building. So a uh, couple things that we're going we're gonna to cover uh, in a little bit more depth. Um, first thing is establishing whatever your ideal view uh, is of a particular, of your building. And so uh, you want to think about your building such that it, you know, depending on your particular view, for example, if I pick this view, I'd be looking at a certain specific aspect of my building. If I was looking down on this side, that might not be the most attractive view of my building, um, in, or, or maybe this side, because I'm going to get a, mostly a blank wall there. So you want to think about what view is the appropriate view to be looking at. This view happens to be uh, a rather nice view to be looking at, because I get a good context of my windows and my railing and how it fits into the site. And you could imagine there being a nice ocean out here. So it kind of works. Um, so this is one of the views that I pick. Um, sometimes, though, you'll want to be you know, in a particular view where you are at like eye level as if you were standing in a particular place looking around. And so when it's a view like this, it can be very hard to, and you saw me already struggling a little bit, to really zoom around and, and get the camera positioned exactly where you want it to go. And so when it's something like this, a lot of times you'll want to actually manipulate the camera itself. So I want to show you today how to manipulate the camera. Uh, the first thing is that by default, in a particular view, Rhino puts you at uh, the equivalent of a 50 millimeter lens, which if you've done any photography, you know that a 50 millimeter is a, a semi-telephoto lens. Um, so it's not a particularly wide angle. You have a particularly narrow view. And so I like to change it when I do architectural renderings to be something uh, a little bit wider angle. And so if I were to go out and shoot um, a building or something like that, I might shoot in a 35 millimeter, I might shoot in a 28. Something along those lines feels about right. So I'm going to switch to a 28. Um, if you do an interior, generally you're going to go even wider. You might go to like an 18 or something like that. Um, and so the, the process is still the same. So I have absolutely nothing selected in my scene. And if I look over here on the right side with nothing selected in the properties, uh, window, you can see that under camera I have something called lens length. And right now it's set at 50, which is what I said it was. So I'm going to change that to 28. And I'll press tab. And you can see that suddenly my view gets a lot wider from where it was. So I was at 50. We'll do that again, 50. And I'm seeing just a, a kind of a close up of this doorway here. And when I switch to 28, I'm much further away. I see the railing on this side. I see the railing on that side. It feels a little bit like I'm seeing more of the architecture. And so generally speaking, I do my renderings in 28. Now, it is important to, to point out that 28 starts to distort the image a little bit. right? So if you get in too tight to your building, you can see how it, it warps. But that's the nature of the, the camera angle. Um, and so when you're setting something up like this, it's not, not necessarily a bad thing to have it like that. So I've worked, and I have kind of a general idea of where I want this view to be, but I want to tweak it a little bit more. So what I'll do is I'll click on this little triangle next to where it says Perspective, and I'll go into the Set Camera menu. And from here, I can come down, and I can choose to show the camera. Now, when I choose Show Camera, nothing happens. Okay? And that's because this view is the view of the camera. So I can't see the camera because it is the view of the camera. Does that make sense? But that camera is now shown in all the other views. Right? So we can see there is the camera. In the top view here, right, that little triangle is the camera. And I can now start to manipulate this. I can even, let me switch this view into perspective. In another perspective view, 
I can see the camera. All right, let me zoom in on this for a second. And let's switch this into shaded mode so you can see a little bit better. So this is the point of the camera, right? That's the actual location of the camera. So for example, I could start by saying, I want this point to be right on this edge. And you see how I'm, as I'm moving it, the view that the camera represents is changing. So let's say that I wanted it, right? I'll drop it right here on that corner. And now I'm going to move it vertically um, in height. So we'll, maybe we'll do, I don't know, 5 foot 8. Oops. It would help if I typed V correctly here. Oh, come on. Let's try that one more time. Sorry. I think my C plane might be off. There. Let's try that one more time. Move. Vertical. Inches. No, you're doing a terrible job of moving for me. Let me reset my C plane. It has to be what's off here. Try that one more time. Move vertical. Five feet eight inches. There we go. That's what I wanted. So I've now set the camera to be at eye level in that corner. Okay. So now I'm looking out as if it were at eye level. Looks like my building might be a little short. <laughs> but anyway, um, maybe I should be doing this from the lower deck. Okay. So I not only have I manipulated the camera position, but I can also manipulate the target, which is right here. So I can choose where I want that target to look. So for example, if I wanted to swing my view, right, I can swing my view around this way. I could swing my view around this way. And you can get a sense for what I'm looking at. I can also position that target on a particular um, object or item. So for example, come on. It's harder to do it. No, that's in its own view. That's why. Uh, let's put it right there on that end. Now we're looking right directly at that. Does that make sense? So I'm manipulating the camera in one of the other views. Um, I can change these others. Like that would change the view aspect. So if I were to drag this, for example, right, I'm getting further away. Therefore, my, my angle is getting wider. So we can look here in the perspective view. I'm now at 15.8 millimeter. Um, likewise, I could make it narrower going in that direction. And we're moving in the direction of uh, there's almost a 35. So you've got ways of manipulating it visually. And then you can also type in the value uh, of what it is that you're trying to do as well. Okay? When you're done and you have a view that you like, so let's say that I like this particular view. I'm happy with it. I want to make sure that I save this view. So I'm going to go to. Um, set view, named views, and you may or may not have done this before. But at this point, it's absolutely critical that you start saving these ideal views once you get it set up, because you'll continue making changes, updating, adding a few things, subtracting a few things, changing the materials, and each time you want to go back to the same render and just re-render it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I could call it something like render zero one. But I might be a little more descriptive. I'll say this is an upper deck view, zero one, and then I'll go ahead and save. So now I have that particular view established. And if I were to move on and change my view, I can come back to it by going to the set view, upper deck view one, and there I am right back at that particular view. Right? So it's the same thing in SketchUp when you save a scene. We're doing the same thing here. So let me also set up one view because this works particularly well to show some of the stuff that I want to show. Maybe like that, there. Yeah, something like that. And I'll set this as another view. So I'll go to Set View, Named Views, and I'll save this one as well. This is uh, North Render 01. And I'll go ahead and save. Okay. So now that I have those views saved, I can always come back to those, which is important. Uh, but it's also time to make sure that I have my materials established and that I've uh, set up my HDRI and my Sun system. And so I'm going to go through those again, even though you guys have been doing it just for the practice of, of, of you seeing me do it again. Uh, first thing I'll do is establish a layer for environment. 
And so it looks like I have a site environment layer. I have sun. Let's make that active, and let's go ahead and drop a sun in. So I'll click on the V-Ray sun. And this one was set to be on the coast, so we'll again pick San Francisco. If you were picking the one that's up in the mountains, you, you might pick um, Carson City. It's pretty close uh, to Lake Tahoe. So I'll pick San Francisco, and we'll set the timing to be about 9 in the morning. Say OK. And I'll drop my light in right there. Okay. So it's on the sun layer. My light exists. Now we need to do the background HDRI. So I'll go into my V-Ray options. I'll go to my environment, and I'm going to load in the skylight in the background. So I'm going to go to text bitmap here. And let's see what I have here. I'm going to do the Malibu overlook. And we're going to do the environment. Say open. Now remember, I have to set this up as an environment. So it's UV general environment. And it is spherical. So I'll say OK. Same thing here. Thank you. There, this one's just the blurry version of the, the non-blurry. So they, they are essentially the same. Yeah, so I need, a, I need a background, and I need the GI skylight. Now, I set my sun at 9 in the morning. But I, what, I, what matters, because of this particular view, I care about what the, the, the background looks like, because I want the ocean to be facing out the correct direction. So when I, when I do a quick render of the scene, let me go to Output. And let's drop this down, maybe like 320. Let me get the view aspect and lock it there. And I'll do a quick little test render here. See if I'm looking in the correct direction. I need to turn on my physical camera. Let's try it one more time. All right, background too dark, so let me adjust that background a little bit. Let's go. Oh, wrong direction, sorry. It's not too bad. I'm not seeing any land out there. If I were to back up my view a little bit, I ought to be able to see a little bit more context here. Makes me wonder if I pick the right view in my HDRIs. Ah. Uh, what did I tell you? This had to be environment, didn't it? <laughs> Whoops. See, even I make mistakes. All right, let's try that again, and let's see if we can get a better context here. There we go. Now we have some. So this is pretty good. I, this is the view that I wanted. I wanted to be looking out. I don't know for sure that my actual sunlight condition matches up. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go based on where the background sun is, and then I'm going to adjust my sun to match it, um, because I want this to be with the ocean out in this direction, because obviously I want that as part of the render. Uh, so let me go ahead and create a sublayer for s the sphere. And we can actually turn off the terrain. Let's turn off those construction lines. Good. Let's make the sphere layer active. Let me drop an infinite plane in. And let me put a little ball on it. So all this is, is repetition of the stuff that we've already done. And let's drop Chrome. I already had Chrome there. Nope. All right. Resources, V-Ray, V-Ray materials, metal, Chrome. Them 
material to selection. And take a look at the top view here, and we'll render. OK, so my shadow is there. Looks like the, the sun actually is in the afternoon. Right, so if I were to look at this a little bit closer, there's my sun, there's my shadow. They don't match up. So let me modify the sun. So I'll click on the sun, go to properties, light properties, modify sun, and this needs to be um, in the afternoon. So let's drop back to San Francisco again. And we'll say it's about 4 in the afternoon or so. Say OK. See my sun changed. Probably went a little far. It's probably more two in the afternoon. No, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I, I realigned my sun to match the background because of the way that I wanted the background. So the point is that I can do it either way. Okay, so now that's established. We can go back to my layers. I can turn off the sphere. We'll leave the sun on. Turn off the sphere. Turn back on the terrain. Turn back on my blocks. And now we're looking at my building. Oh, let me go back to that north render view here. Set view north render 1. And now if I were to render, out here. Okay. I'm obviously I'm missing some materials. I'm going to have to go through and, and fix those and assign those materials. But we're getting pretty good context uh, for the uh, for the sky and the ocean here, but I have this big white sheet, and that is the ground that my building is sitting on, and so I need to find a way to cover up that that ground uh, and and create something that mimics what the ocean is going to look like. And so I've done that for you, and I actually have a few things to give you today. Uh, the first is the ocean itself, and so. It would be logical to be able to just throw an infinite plane down and put an ocean texture on top of it and call it a day. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work that well because we can't do displacement. You guys remember the displacement, which would be the waves, uh, on an infinite plane. It won't, V-Ray won't let us. It's too big. So what I've done instead is if you go to Resources and then the Rhino Blocks Library and you go to Landscape, I have some presents for you. The first one is the ocean. And so if I were to click on the ocean here, it's a rather calm ocean. But it's under, it's under resources, um, Rhino Blocks Library, Landscape. And so what this is, is it's, 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 a, it's like a giant dinner plate that I can drop into the scene and I can mimic the ocean with it. So I'll go ahead and I'll download the Ocean 3DM Rhino Block. And we'll move it to my flash drive. So let me go to Show in Folder. Let me copy it and put it on my flash drive. Maybe. There we go. And I'll paste that. Now, for those of you that are not doing the ocean scene, I've struggled with the, the mountain scene, but I created um, this last weekend a Tahoe uh, terrain with Lake Tahoe, and this is Fallen Leaf Lake there, for you guys to use based on your site. Um, so this is the, essentially the same thing. You'll be able to drop this right in on your site. Uh, and it'll give you uh, the, kind of the background mountains and obviously Lake Tahoe, et cetera. Is it as good as a photo? No, but it'll, it'll satisfy some of the, the background imagery and let you kind of get something into the scene. So this works exactly the same way as the ocean does in terms of being able to bring it in. The idea is that this piece of terrain then blocks the horizon line, and so that when you install your HDRI, it'll blend seamlessly from, from this mountain line. Same thing happens in the, uh, in the one that I'm going to show you with the ocean. Okay? So I'm back in my file. I'm going to go to File, and then Insert. And this is going to be a block reference as well. So let me go to my flash drive here, and we'll open up the ocean. I'll go ahead and say OK. I'm going to link this file the same way as I did before. And I'll go ahead and say OK. Comes in as ocean. And we'll drop it in somewhere like this. Now, it's probably a little bit high if I were to look at it in its side view. Yeah, there's the ocean. Too high. So let's 
step back a little bit, and I'm going to move this down. And so as I move it down, you can kind of see I'm showing more and more of the, the terrain on the side here. And the sweet spot is going to be down to about right there. It depends on how much beach you want to show. Okay, Something like that. And what that's doing is it's giving me this, this large dinner plate-like object that's covering up the bottom of my terrain. See that? So it's giving me a coastline, and then this is going to blend out to the background HDRI that I have. This shape came in with a material on it called Ocean, which is now right there. It doesn't look like much here, but it will mimic when we do the render what the ocean looks like. So let me jump back to my North Render 1 here. I'm going to go to Set View, North Render 1, and then we'll go ahead and do a little mini test render. And so where before I had that white object. Now I have a little bit of a problem because I've got that little banding shown there, so I'm going to have to change it. But you can see that looking at this, it looks like ocean going out, and then ultimately it'll fade and blend into the background HDRI that I'm using. Does that make sense so far? So I'm going to have to do something with probably an infinite plane to, to minimize that shadow line that occurs, but we can solve that uh, as we go forward a little bit. So now I have the ocean in my scene. Um, which is exactly what we were after. Okay? And it's, again, just a block reference. Now I need to w start worrying about the landscape. So if I were to do a render of this in this view, I have my building sitting here, but it's on top of just this white landscape. So I need to apply some kind of a material that would mimic kind of a grassy hillside sort of thing. And all of this could be done after the fact in Photoshop, uh, which may give you better results long term. But since this class isn't about Photoshop, it's about V-Ray, we're going to talk about how, how to make it work in V-Ray. So let me switch back to my view here, go to North Render 1. And I was very careful in my selection in that I don't have too much grass that's really being shown. Right? If I was back here, it would be a little bit, little bit more challenging. Uh, but again, I'm not, I'm not doing this view. If I were doing this view, I'd have to worry a lot more about the grass. Okay? So I'm being selective about what my view is. So let me go ahead and load in a couple materials. So I'll open my material editor here. And I'm going to load a material that is, again, available in the same stack of, of materials that you've, uh, you've downloaded already. So I'll go under v Resources, V-Ray, V-Ray Materials. This time I'm going to go into Landscape. And inside of Landscape, there's a folder called Grass Materials. And so I have a couple different materials. The one that I'm going to use is the Grassy Hill Background. And I'll go ahead and load that one in, which is right here. And I want that to apply then to my uh, terrain layer. So let me go ahead and right click. And let me go to um, Apply Material to Layer. And we'll pick terrain, and I'll say OK. And what this material does is it's kind of like a generic um, blotchy colored uh, terrain. It's nothing particularly uh, exciting, but if I were to switch to rendered mode here for a second, oh, it conveniently isn't showing me. How nice. Let's switch back. Maybe not. Switch back to shaded, and I'll do a quick render so you can see it. OK, so it's by no means the most attractive material in the world, but it serves as a nice backdrop. It's kind of mixed tans and greens. Okay? It, looking back over here, it doesn't look quite so bad. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back into my view that's a little bit closer. So we'll go back to Set View, North Render, that one. And I'm going to concentrate on how am I displaying this piece of terrain and this piece of terrain right there. And if I were to just do the render right now in this view, we'd end up with kind of a speckled green here and a speckled green here, which really isn't that attractive. So that comes to my next gift to you. And my next gift to you is available in the same place under landscape, and it's called bunch grass. And what bunch grass is, is it's a, it's a special um, 
object that we can use as a block that will make this spiky grass texture. Okay? And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and download it, this bunchgrass 3 dm file. And I'm going to save it. And you should already have the material on your flash drive because I gave you the materials to begin with. If you don't, it is available there as a zip format. So let me go ahead and show this in the folder. And here's bunch grass. Let me copy it. And I will again drop it into my flash drive into today's folder. Get that in there. And let's go back to Rhino. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my view slightly like that. And I'm going to go to File, Insert. And I'll pick the, the bunch grass right here. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And it can again be linked. And we hope that it'll let me drop it in right there. Okay, so I'm just going to snap it there. So it really doesn't look like much. Essentially what it is, is it's a bunch of intersecting surfaces. Each of those surfaces has a special material that's applied to it that makes the top transparent and the bottom uh, not so transparent. So if, for example, I were to render it right now, it wouldn't render because the material wasn't applied to it. So <laughs> let me come back and apply that material. Um, load material and it should be the bunch grass. And what is it you're applying the bunch grass to? These 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 planes here. Lock instance. And it should have come with it, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, where's my grass? Bunch grass, thank you. Uh, apply material to selection and let's try this again here. Now, you'll notice that as soon as you start putting these in, the render times dramatically jump up because this is rendering grass blades is a whole lot harder than rendering flat planes of the surface. Mm -hmm. So the, I'm still rendering very, very small, but I want you to be able to see what this looks like, and then we'll go from there. So I'll point out while we're waiting for this to finish that you see that this is actually casting the shadow that is the grass with all the little blades. So you can see that this is part of why it takes V-Ray longer to do this kind of a rendering and why a lot of times you would choose to do something like this in Photoshop instead. But now that it's essentially finished, and again, this is a low quality, you can see that all of these little spikes look like a natural grass sort of field, which is the idea. Okay? So obviously they're, they're not in the right place because they're sticking out of my concrete wall here, but you get the sense that this texture is then going to work nicely uh, in this part of the drawing. So I have this particular piece, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it. And we'll move it over so that it's kind of right in that corner. Now from here, it's a matter of copying and pasting this piece so that it fills in what we're going to see in the north render view. And so sometimes it's beneficial to have one view that's set up as the one that you're actually going to do the rendering in, and the other view that's set up where you're going to do the copying and pasting. So I'm going to work in both of these views at the same time so you can kind of see where the density works. And so I could start with an array or an array on a surface. Uh, so let's do an array. Um, see if array surface will do it for me. Base point will pick right there. Uh, normal for objects, go straight up. So my target surface there. The elements in V direction, let's say 10. 
OK, so it, it's essentially trying to array that on the surface, but I flipped it. So let me just do a copy and paste. It'll be faster for right now. Let me take this, and I'm going to copy it. And let's do it in the top view. And I'm going to turn off my snaps for right now. And we're just going to drop these so that they intersect right along there. Actually, not that bad. Really? Now, this is a perfect example of where a grasshopper script would be far better, but it's beyond the, the scope of this particular class um, for me to show you. But you could populate this across a particular surface. So I have I have the grass showing up rather nicely there, but obviously it's missing in the back half here. So I'm going to have to go through and move some of these up. Um, let me select. I'm going to lock. I know, I know. Let me lock the terrain. And let me lock my retreat base here. There we go. And I'll move vertical. We'll pull those up a little bit. And this is, again, one of those moments where seeing what I'm seeing in this view is going to be helpful, because I'll know if I've moved them up far enough. All right, so then we can take another set here. up a little bit. So the idea is that these are, these are ultimately going to intersect and work their way up this particular surface. And once I have this established, set view, uh, and we'll go to my north render one, this is now going to act as grass rather than the, the default surface on that particular piece. Okay? So sometimes you want a little bit more than that. And obviously, I'll keep going, and I could, I could add those. But I don't want you to have to sit here and, and watch me. Sometimes you want to add a little bit of extra to something like this. And that might be that you want to put a rock in. Uh, and so I have some rocks for you, too. Uh, so if we go to the same site here, there's my rocks. Now, these are probably better off for the Sierras because they're granite, little granite boulders. Uh, but I made these up. Uh, and they sit nicely in a little group of three, though I have the individual ones, folders two, three, and four, that you can drop in as well. I'm going to drop in the group of three. Uh, so I'll download the granite boulder group one. And it is definitely my intent to um, make some more, but I've only had time to make three. Oops, I didn't want to open that. One folder. And let me go ahead and copy this. Copy. And then we put it into today's folder, maybe. Now, the one thing I should have mentioned is in, you know, let me close that. When I was working with those, um, these little objects, what I really should have done is after the first one, and I'll go back and do this, I should make it a proxy object first, a V-Ray proxy object, and then I should array the proxy object across this particular surface. So then we're, we're saving the geometry, and it won't slow Rhino down. Uh, anyway, I can do that, but I want you guys to be able to, to keep moving. So this time, I'm going to insert those boulders. So let me go to File, Insert. And let me open up the grouping. And looks like my scale is rather small. It also looks like I need to move this. So let's move. Turn on my snaps. I actually don't think my scale was that small, I think. All right, let's scale these. Um, I don't know. Three. Maybe too big. Uh, something like that. 
I want them to be big. And let's move these over. Somewhere in there. And let's go back so that we're seeing this in the north that view, north render one. And we need to drop these down a little bit. Maybe something like that. Yeah, we're losing. Not seeing quite enough of them. Let's move those up a little bit. And so there'll be some happy medium of where the right setup was. And I probably need to rotate these a little bit because they're not really in the right configuration. Maybe a little more like that. And then we'll go back to the set view, north render one. Right? And so now I have those, those rocks that are sitting there. I have the grass. I need to put grass down here. And then I need to make sure that my materials are correct. But at this point, when I do the rendering, it's going to start to look pretty darn accurate. Uh, and so I'm sacrificing the render quality, uh, or I'm sacrificing the time. That therein lies why the, uh, the network render is a good idea for, for these kinds of grass. Um, but I can actually do a photorealistic rendering with these kinds of elements. Okay? So your goal today is to get as far as you can modeling, but to make sure that you've established this site or this scene such that you can go back. Once you have the HDRI loaded and the sun loaded, it's always a good idea before you move on to save your VisOp settings. And I highly recommend doing this. So click this. This is again in the V-Ray options. So I've opened up the options. I'll come here, and I'm going to click on the Save icon. This will then save your current settings. So the, the time of day that my sun is and all of that will be saved, uh, and my HDR background. So we'll go ahead and save this into today's folder. And we'll call this uh, uh, what's today, the 11th? And we'll click Save. And that just means I can reload that uh, if I need it. OK? So. Um, I'm going to turn you guys loose to, to model. Um, again, obviously, today's, today's uh, goal is to have as much of the um, exterior daytime rendering done as possible. Uh, and then we'll, we'll move into next class. I mean, it, it moves fast. So the more you get modeled, the better, trust me. Uh, because next class, we'll start doing lighting. And then we'll move. So we'll do lighting in its own file as you learn lighting. And then next week, a week from today, You'll do uh, lighting for an interior daytime scene. So you want the background and everything set up, and then we'll put some lights in, and you'll do the rendering. So everything builds on itself. And so it's important to recognize that that's going to start happening. So really, really concentrate on getting your, your retreat done and into a scene today. Even if you don't get the, the grass and all that stuff, you can add that later. But at least get it into the scene. Are there any questions? No, I know these are going to start to be lectures where there's a lot to take in, uh, but that's the nature of trying to, to put it all together.